So the day has finally come where we have to replace the screen on our 3D printer. Um, if you haven't been following the channel, we have a Prusa SL1, which I'll show you very shortly. Um, this type of printer is unlike SLA, where it's a laser that goes back and forth and fills in the gaps. Um, MSLA is a screen, basically like a phone size screen, that masks the, uh, the, the layers as it goes. And then there's a light underneath that hardens the resin. Now, if that screen uh, starts to get damaged by the UV or just any, any real problems, like pixels, dead pixels, things like that, then it, obviously your layers get ruined. And one of the first things that I noticed, um, actually relatively recently, was a hole. Now, um, if you go into the diagnosis, usually the diagnosis is that there's like a speck of something um, covering that spot. Um, I, I'll show you the hole in a second up close. Um, there's usually supposed to be something covering your screen. Now, like I don't eat cookies over the screen or anything. Like it's not a, there's a, no dirt on here whatsoever. It's very clean. Um, so I suspected it was dead pixels and I was correct. Um, I will show you the test that I did to prove that. And I'll also show you some of the other things uh, that have to do with the printer. So these screens as well are also considered a consumable item. Now they do have a th 500 hour life, give or take, it depends um, on your usage. Um, there are, they are coming out with new screens. There's something called um, Mono Crystal or something like that, where it has like a 2000 hour life. Um, now maybe, I hope, Prusa will eventually update these because I believe these are actually open source machines. So anything you wanted to do with this machine, you can do yourself, um, but it's not a, a ridiculous, stretch of the imagination to assume that they could put different screens in the aluminum housing that fits into the machine. So maybe we'll see a higher resolution, different crystal or different uh, pixel type, you know, things like that. So um, fingers crossed in the future that we get upgrades, but who knows? Anyway, I'm going to show you the printer now and uh, we'll get into talking about how we're going to go about this process. So I'm going to show you the system information page now, and um, we're just going to talk a little bit about what I see. So you can see here on the bottom, UV LED time counter it says 398.31 hours. Now I'm not sure if that means that the, uh, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. The LED light underneath that's inside this box has been running for that amount of time. Now, since this was a brand new printer, I'm not sure if that corresponds to screen time. Um, I'm not really sure how this will function. Since this has a 500 hour life, that's obviously a much lower number. So I'm not really sure um, how to approach that. I wish that there was an additional function in here for telling me screen life. Maybe they can do that in a future update. But anyway, it is what it is. So I have to replace it and uh, we'll get started on that. <clears throat> now it says, um, I actually have all the tools to bring out. Actually, we'll do that right now. So we have all the tools we need. Uh, I've been sitting on this stuff for quite a while, actually. Um, when I first bought the printer, I wanted extra screens because I knew that the screen was a consumable item. Um, so anyway, here's the tools that we'll need uh, that came with it. <clears throat> I've actually got three screens. Uh, one, two, and three. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one. I think we'll go with that one. And then we have this. This is the screen calibrator. This was something that I had to order separately. Um, essentially what this does, after we fit the new screen in, it needs to, to do something with, I have no idea. Honestly, I'm not even gonna lie. I have no idea what it does. Um, but it like somehow measures the pixels or something, anyway. And then there's a bunch of other junk. Um, I went through the handbook already and there is nothing in here, however, However, the Prusa website is very good and they've got this very simple, very iFixit type of breakdown for how we're, we're going to do this. Um, they say it's very easy, 20 steps, not so bad. It's literally just one ribbon cable, so I hope this goes smoothly. I would lie if I'm not, to say I'm not intimidated, but I'm sure once we get going it'll be fine. All right, so what I'm gonna do, uh, I'm just gonna hold my phone manually here and we'll do a display test. So this is a, a built-in thing that you can do to make sure your screen is in good order. 
Now I need to close the lid. I'm going to do something bad, though. I need to do something bad, and I'm going to not close the lid as it says. I'm just going to hold down the sensor. I'm not going to look at it, but uh, it should be okay for the cam. Maybe it's okay for the camera. And you can see right there, there's that spot that we were talking about. And it's just a group of dead pixels. I don't know why it's a perfect circle. A bit odd. But everywhere else seems pretty fine. So it's kind of a waste. I wonder if this is just kind of like a defective thing with this particular screen. It's very hard to say. So from here on in the video, unfortunately, we had a major um, audio failure, I guess you might say. So uh, this is going to be voiceover, Dan, from now on. And uh, anyway, so I'll just kind of narrate what's going on here in the video. Um, we had to take off the front panel, which is held on by these uh, four flush set screws, uh, four on each side. And then there was a cabling harness underneath, which was the power button and the um, information relay between the USB and the actual um, I don't know if you call them motherboard, but whatever the main logic board is for the printer. And that had to be unclipped and removed before we could take anything off. So now that we have access to the logic board, um, this little ribbon cable is what we're going to be focusing on. And you can see it's got this little um, support bracket, I guess. Uh, I think that support bracket's there because uh, unlike many other printers, this one has the um, the, the vat drops, basically, which stirs the resin and helps separate the layers between each, um, well, I guess cured layer. And um, since the ribbon cable is flexible, this is just there to hold it in place so that it doesn't fall off and completely wreck your print. It's only held on by these two screws, so nothing major. And it's actually 3D printed, which is kind of neat. I like that about Prusa, is that they're actually using 3D printing in their own products. So. So with that um, safety bracket thing removed, uh, the ribbon cable released very easily. I'm not sure what the technical term is for this type of connector where it, it just kind of pushes on to connect, um, but it was very easy to remove. And then after that, it's just removing the screen assembly itself from the aluminum frame, which is then attached to the motor, which dips the vat. Yeah, there's a lot going on in this printer, but um, overall I was actually, my my, trepidation was a little bit unfounded. This is actually a very well-designed machine. It was designed to be put together as a kit. So, you know, with manufacturing in mind, it, it was very well designed, I think, to make it very usable, or sorry, user accessible. So one of my biggest trepidations with doing a screen replacement like this is that when they assemble at least this aspect of the printer in the factory, and this is according to the Prusa uh, factory tour that they posted on their channel a while ago, um, this aspect is done in a clean room, which minimizes dust particulate getting inside the machine, especially under the screen, which, as you can imagine, is a bit of a problem if you know a pixel, a, if a single dead pixel creates issues. A speck of dust, I would say, is. Uh, maybe not quite as bad, but it's similar uh, in terms of problems. So I have wiped this down. I kind of wiped down the inside, the mirror system around the LED. Um, and I didn't notice a whole lot of dust buildup, um, you know, just from normal use. These do have like a fan system to keep the screen and the, L the, the UV LED cool. And I didn't notice any buildup on the actual parts. So that's good. There must be some sort of filter in here that's working doing its job um, but yeah after this we just got to reattach the rin ribbon cable and that little safety bracket and that pretty much concludes this part of the job after this we need to pull out that calibrator for the screen and make sure that um, the you know all the software stuff is updated um, before I fully reassemble this printer I want to make sure that that connector for the screen is actually uh, hooked up properly so I'm going to uh, boot up the printer, run a display test, and make sure that it's it's good. Um, you know, regarding this um, calibrator thing, I really don't understand what its purpose is. Um, I, I guess all those little recessed things, they're sensors, and I guess they're measuring 
the UV output, so maybe they're just making sure there's no dead pixels, but I was under the impression that this issue, the need for this calibrator at all, was more of a software thing. Um, basically, the screen, or the information that's on the screen doesn't or didn't match what was in the printer when it was first made in the factory, so it kind of like rejects it, you know, like rejecting a new organ type of thinking, maybe. Um, I don't fully understand, but somehow this calibrator does that. It overwrites that in the software, in the firmware, and it also calibrates the screen. So anyway, I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but I know that now with the Prusa system, you cannot buy a new screen without getting the calibrator. And then later on, I believe you have to contact them if you need new screens, saying that you do have a calibrator already so that you're ready to go. Um, now this process was pretty simple. We just put the thing on, plugged it into the USB port, into the actual printer, and then these were added in the new software so we can just do a display replacement and it will run its little diagnostic. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I didn't really remove any parts of this video that were uh, not important. Uh, this whole process I would consider now to be relatively painless. Uh, I'm very glad that they designed it the way they did and um, I feel like this is going to be a a great printer for years to come when if when upgrades come someday um, I want to make a note something that I didn't mention before is that I, this is the first time I've ever done any maintenance on this printer in having it for more than a year and a half uh, the fr this screen that I just replaced was actually the very first screen so even though we don't have numbers to go with it um, based in the printer itself you know like that 500 hour limit I still feel like I got a very good value out of one screen considering one screen replacements eighty dollars so anyway we'll wrap up the video if you like this video like and subscribe we're always updating more stuff and we have lots coming down the pipeline so I will see you guys in the next one